Hi everyone, welcome again. In this video, we will see what is Spring Cloud function. Let's see what we are going to cover. We will start with a brief introduction of Spring Cloud function project, what it is and what do we get out of it. Then we will run our first cloud function on local machine. And in the end, we will see how can we expose these functions on web, same as REST APIs. So let's get started. First of all, we need to understand what is Spring Cloud function. Spring Cloud function is a project under Spring Cloud umbrella, which belongs to the overall Spring family. This particular project focuses on the serverless programming where we can develop the serverless functions. It promotes the implementation of business logic via functions. And how it does that? It does that by decoupling the business logic that we implemented as functions from any specific runtime target. That means whatever function we write, the same function can be run as a web endpoint as a stream processor or as a task. So by web endpoint, we mean the functions can be exposed on the internet, same as REST APIs. They have a URL and they can be accessed in order to execute the function. What about the stream processor? Well, it comes into the picture when we work with the projects like Spring Cloud Dataflow and Spring Cloud Streams and in the end, a task. So the same function can be used as a task. Let's say when we are working with Spring Cloud Task, which is another project, another Spring project. So the main idea here is that the same function can be used differently depending on the requirement and the context. And it is possible because the implementation or the business logic of that function is decoupled from the specific runtime. All right. Spring Cloud function also supports a uniform programming model across serverless providers. That means the same function that we write using Spring Cloud function can work with different providers. So if we are using Azure, we can deploy it as Azure functions. If we are using AWS, we can deploy the same function code as AWS Lambda. And in the end, same as other Spring projects, when we use Spring Cloud function, we get all the capabilities, all the benefits of Spring Boot. That is auto configuration, dependency injection, observability and so on. All right. So let's move on. Why Spring Cloud function? As we have covered in the last slide, when we use a Spring Cloud function, we get the ease of development. We simply focus on the business logic. And whatever we write, whatever function we write, it is language and runtime agnostic. So we discussed how a simple function can be used as an AWS Lambda or as an Azure function. And the same function can also be used as a web endpoint, as a stream processor or as a task. Deployment flexibility relates to the different cloud vendors. So we can easily deploy the functions to AWS, to Lambda, to GCP, whatever it is. Function composition, because we work with functions, so we can compose functions to get the new functionality. And the last point here says stateless functions. This project enables developers to develop stateless functions. Stateless functions can be scaled easily. They are more resilient. They are loosely coupled. So we get all these benefits if we are using Spring Cloud function. So that's enough theory. Let's move on and see a quick demo on Spring Cloud function. How can we write function and how can we run it? So to develop a new Spring Cloud function, we will go to the Spring Initializer and we will generate a function project. This is going to be a Maven project with Spring Boot 3. Let me change the group. Name of the artifact. So let's name it function 101. And then we will add the dependencies. So search for the function. And this is the one that we need function coming from Spring Cloud. And that's it. Let's generate the project and open it in IntelliJ. So I have extracted the project. Let me open it in IntelliJ. So the project setup is complete. And if we check the dependencies here, we have a single dependency, which is Spring Cloud function context. So how do we write a function? How do we expose a function? To do that, we will go to the main class and we will see how can we write a function. So let's say we have a requirement to return the length of a string. That means as an input, we will receive a string value. And as an output, we have to return the length of that string. So how do we implement this logic as a function? Do we need a new keyword? Do we need a new dependency? Or do we need a new class that will be exposed as a function? Well, this is simple. We know in Java, we have functional interfaces. We have different functions. And out of them, we need to focus on just three, which is the function, consumer, and supplier. So if we need to generate the values, we know we have to use supplier functions. If we have to consume the value and process them, we use 
consumer and for all other general purpose implementations we use function which has an input type and a return type so in general a function is a piece of logic that accepts an input and returns an output and we can use the same function to implement our own function so let's say how do we do that this is the function which is coming from java.util.function and we have to define the type parameters for input and output we know we are going to accept a string as an input and we have to return the length of that string which is integer and then the name of the function we can name it anything that we want and now we have to return the function to do that we can say all right so this is a method whose name is str length and this method returns a function which basically calculates the length of an input string so we have just written a function the next step is to annotate it with the bean annotation so now we have a working function which accepts a string as an input and it returns the length of that string as an output we just need to use these interfaces these functional interfaces function consumer or supplier depending on the use case and here we decided to use the function with an input type and an output type so once we have written this method once we have this function how do we execute it well same as any other spring core project where we can use the command line runner to execute a bean directly as an entry point in the same way we can run the function as well so we will define a new bean and this bean is command line runner and this runner would have a dependency on application context so we will ask spring boot to inject the application context and in this runner once we have the application context we can get an instance of any bean which is in the application context and there is one such bean that we can use to execute the functions let's see which one is that so context.get bean and that bean is function catalog this is the one so this is a catalog class function catalog class which as the name suggests is a catalog of all the functions that exist in this code base so it has information of all those functions catalog and once we have the access to this catalog we can look up any method so we can say lookup and then the name of the function so what is the name of function now the thing is whatever name that we use as a method name that becomes the name of that function so this function has this name str length and we can use the same name to look up the function definition and this becomes a function that will be returned by the lookup method all right so we can store it as a function string integer and now we can use this function object to execute the function how do we do that well it's simple we call function dot apply and we pass it a value and we can log it so let's quickly recap what we did we have a method str length which returns the function and this method is using at the rate bean annotation which means it returns a new instance of a bean because we have to expose functions so we need to use at the rate bean annotation then to run this program as a command line program we are using this runner which is also a bean and with the help of application context we are getting the instance of function catalog this catalog holds the information of all the functions that we have defined and exposed so we are using the lookup method of this catalog by passing it a function name now function name is same as the method name which is returning the function and once we have the access to the function we can call the apply method by passing it a value and that value will be passed to this method body and the method body will execute and return the output so let's run the program so 
So we see that the program ran fine and as an output we see the value 5 which is the length of this string. And this is a fully functional function which can be deployed on AWS or Azure as a standalone program, as a standalone jar. And in the same way, instead of this very simple implementation, we can have a more complex logic that can be executed as a function body. Now let's move on and see how else we can define the functions. So we can have many functions and those functions can have long bodies. And it won't look good if we put all the functions here in the same class which will become a god class. So can we move these functions to their respective classes and can we still use them as functions? So let's see how do we do that. To do that we will add a new package and we will name it functions. And here in this package we can add a new class. Let's name it to uppercase. And this class and this class will implement the function. The input type will be a string because we will accept again a string and the output will also be a string but in uppercase. And then we need to implement the apply method. This one. So again this method is pretty simple and it does not have a long body but we just want to see how can we separate those functions in different classes instead of putting everything in the main class. We need to provide the implementation of this method now because we need to return the same string but in uppercase. So we can do that by calling the to uppercase method and that's it. That's the implementation of this function. Now can we access this function via function catalog as we did earlier with this function. So let's try it first. Let's put a separator here. And we will say catalog dot lookup name of the function which should be the class name and then the type of function this is going to be string string like this and then we need to call this function so if we pass it a string we should get the value in uppercase and we need to print it. Okay, let me clear the console and rerun the program. And we see that it failed. So let's check the logs. We see the output 5, that means this function worked fine. But after that, we get the error. That means it's not able to find the new function that we created. And why is it so? Well, the reason is the old method was defined as a bean in the same class. So it can scan that method and it can find the function body. But the new function or the class that we have created, it's not able to find that one. So how do we fix it? Well, there is a property that we need to define that tells the Spring Framework where to find or which folders to scan to find the functions. So if you go to the application.properties, this is the property that we need to provide. Let me uncomment it. This is spring.cloud.function.scan.packages. And then we need to provide the package where we have put the functions. So in this case, the new function is in the functions folder. And that's why this path or this package name that we have provided. And now if you rerun. And this time we see it cannot invoke this function because this is null. So that means it's now able to read the file, but it could not find the actual function. It could not look up. And the reason behind this is the name. We provided the wrong name. The correct name is in the camel case, which is to uppercase because the name of the class file is to uppercase T in caps. So we need to convert that name in the camel case and let's rerun the program. At this time, we see it worked fine. So we see the output word that means the value that we provided here, the function that we have written, it converted this string in uppercase correctly. And the function catalog was able to find the new function that we have defined as a class. So we have two choices. If the function is small and can be exposed in the same class, we can declare it as a bean like this. Or we can move the code to a different class. Then we can implement the function interface, provide the implementation in the class. The additional thing is if we go via this route, we have to define this property so that the framework can scan the package and find the functions. 
all right and then we can use the function catalog to look up the functions by their name in camel case so in this video we saw what is cloud function and how can we write simple functions to run them as a standalone program in the next video we will see how can we expose the functions as web endpoints same as rest apis so stay tuned thanks for watching